Kung napansin niyo po, ang banal na espiritu ay binanggit sa tatlong pagbasa. Yung una po ay ang ginawa ni Peter, uh, P- Peter and uh, um, uh, somebody else. Eh. I forget names all the time. Uh, pagkatapos uh, magturo si Felipe sa Samaria, dumating si Felipe at ang kanyang kasama at uh, nilapatan ng kamay at sinasabi sa unang pagbasa na tinanggap nila ang banal na espiritu. Ang sulat naman ni Pedro sa ikalawang pagbasa ay may kinalaman sa kanyang tagubilin na maging handa tuwi na, na magpaliwanag ayon sa iyong pag-asa. At ang Espiritu ang siyang tutulong at magbibigay lakas. Sa Ebanghelyo namang karinig lamang natin ay sinabi ng Panginoon na hindi maglalaon at ako'y lilisan pero hindi ko kayo iiwan ng mga ulila. I will not leave you orphans, I'll come to you. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father. And he talks about the spirit of truth, the spirit that is advocate. In Latin, the word advocate is advocatus, which happens to be the root word of the Spanish abogado. Advocatus in Latin means the one we call upon, advocare. When uh, you are you're feeling helpless, you're feeling hopeless, then you need somebody to call on, to give you Animo, that's the motto of the Lasallians, Animo Lasal. It means uh, sp- uh, uh, you are imparting the spirit, the spirit of hope, the spirit of courage. In Italian, the equivalent is Forza. You, you, when you are discouraged, you want some external help coming from outside of you that works within you, and that is the work of the spirit. So, Napakagandang isipin na habang tayo ay papalapit na papalapit sa uh, ascension of the Lord at sa susunod na linggo pagkatapos ng ascension ay ang pagbaba ng banal na Espiritu then we've come full circle. The Lord has revealed the fullness of the Godhead and the fullness of the Godhead means God the Father, the Creator, the Giver of Life, God the Son who uh, we, we, we know as uh, the God who took flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And now the Lord talks about His gift that He will give to us after He uh, ascends uh, with, uh, to, to heaven to sit at His Father's right hand, and that is the Spirit. So we've gone full circle. So we have here uh, the, the, the fullness of the revelation of who God is and what God is like. One God, three divine persons. But I'd like to focus on what he said prior to his promise of sending the Advocate, and which is exactly the fruit of the Spirit. The, the fruit of the Spirit, according to St. Paul, in his letter to the uh, Corinthians and the Galatians, has, uh, has to do with love, with patience, with understanding, with harmony. And so, the Lord says today, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now that's a mouthful. If we really love the Lord, then we have to show it somehow. We have to so show it in, um, in reality. We've got to live it. So love and live. If you love, then you've got to live by what you claim you love. But interestingly, you cannot reverse this. Whilst it is true that if we love God, we will keep His commandments, it is not true all the time that if you do good, it doesn't follow that you love God. People always act out of mixed motives. You can do good in order to get rewards. You can pretend to be obedient because you want to be promoted. If you are in a in a company and you know that your boss is looking around for somebody who needs to be promoted, then what you do, you will butter up. You will pretend to be okay. You will pretend to be compliant 
you will pretend to be uh, to be you know loyal and this is exactly the reason why there is no opposition in Russia because Putin has dictated has may impress upon everybody that I don't want any disloyal person so nobody can criticize me nobody can say anything it becomes a crime of treason when you say anything against him now you can do good yes but you can act out of false motives you can keep the Lord's commandments come to mass every Sunday but you can do it for ulterior motives that are less than honest, less than sincere. We all out, uh, act out of mixed motives. And uh, we, we counselors make a distinction between pure and unpure motives. It's distinct from impure, unpure motives. We can act out of pure motives. And what is that pure motive? When you do it only out of love for God and solely out of love for God. But human as we are, we also have other agenda besides the love of God. So we always act out of mixed motives. But make no mistake about it. We can act out of mixed motives and that's perfectly all right. And God understands. But today's gospel tells us, led by the Spirit, strengthened by the Spirit, uh, led to hope and led to courage and even if things are not going too well for us when the going gets rough then we need the guidance from above uh, kung minsan hindi nyo ba naran, uh, naranasan ito na uh, hinanghina kayo patang pata wala na kayong nanghinawa wala na kayong kagana-gana and then from un for unexplainable reasons after you say a little prayer then you become very courageous and you do the right thing. That's the Spirit living in us, acting in us. The Spirit that is our advocate. Cardinal Mercier, many more than 100 years ago, uh, taught us the secret to sanctity. And he, uh, according to him, his, the secret to sanctity is devotion to the Holy Spirit. And he has a a beautiful prayer that I hope I can recite from memory. He says, O Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, light of my light, enlighten, guide, strengthen, and console me. Tell me what I ought to do. Command me to do them. I promise to be submissive to everything that you permit to happen to me. Only show me what is your will. Today, it will be good for us to bring home that knowledge that our abogado, our advocate, the one we call upon, the spirit of truth, the consoler, the one whom the Lord promised to send prior to his uh, ascending into heaven, he sends during the day of Pentecost. And we received him when we were baptized. We received him a second time when we were confirmed. And uh, when we were baptized and confirmed, the Spirit's indwelling presence in us is always there. So it's good to have a devotion to the Holy Spirit, to God, to the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit. Today, we are highlighting the Spirit, the Advocate, the Consoler, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows Him. So now that you know him, bring home that prayer. You can Google it, the prayer to the Holy Spirit by Cardinal Mercier. Um, he's from, again, Belgium. He's a Belgian who lived in the early 20th century. So I'll repeat the prayer. I hope I can repeat it word for word again. O Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, light of my light, enlighten, guide, strengthen, and console me. Tell me what I ought to do. Command me to do them. I promise to be submissive to everything that you permit to happen to me. Only show me what is your will.